Hi, it's your girl Fee, Felicia, hot girl Fee, glam diva, or whatever you want to call me. I'm coming to y'all to do a tutorial on how to do those hand fans, church fans, whatever you want to call them. Um, I have them in all white, and I have a few with a black trim. And I'm going to do the all white one today well it's just a, a size difference a, a minor size difference um with the black trim i do sell these um if anybody would like to order them you can inbox me on facebook my facebook page is felicia f-e-l-i-c-i-a or scroggins s-c-r-o-g-g-i-n-s -G -G and i sell them for 10 for 15 dollars Plus the shipping if you're not uh, local. And I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana. So if you're not local, then you have to pay shipping costs. And I'm sure it's probably about $5 maybe. Somewhere like that. Okay, I'm going to get started. I already have some um, stuff uh, loaded here that I'm going to use. I've already done this. I'm going to just recreate it so you all can see. Um, this image right here, I just put in flames. I Googled and I found this image. Um, this is our patch for the Shreveport Fire Department. I Googled. Um, I'm not sure what I put in for this. It may have been ribbon scroll or something like that. I put this in Google and I found this. My font, I use Sheer Cuts a lot. Four. That's what I have uploaded on my computer. Therefore, I don't have to move everything and put it all together. It's already together, and I just weld it once I move it over into my design space. So, I'm going to use these four images here, and I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Yeah, my computer is very slow, so I may pause the video every now and then so it'll catch up but if it moves fast then thank you lord all right this is the name that i created in sure cuts a lot this font is oh christmas let me look because i cannot remember christmas wish calligraphy that's the name of this font right here the font that i'm using so Patricia A. Diaz is in Christmas Wish Calligraphy. And I found that on Dafont.com, D-A-F-O-E-N-T.com, and it's a free font site. So I'm going to go ahead and um, weld that together. What I'm going to do now is click on this flame. It's so big. I'm going to just bring that down to probably about six in width and let it adjust to height just to get it out of the way. All right. So I have this weld. I'm going to go right up here and change it to print. it out of the way I'm gonna make this a little bit small and get it out of the way make my ribbon over here out of the way okay I'm gonna go right over here and I'm gonna go to shapes I'm gonna get me a circle I always try to use the way whatever I'm pressing on, try to use that shape so that it makes sure everything's going to fit inside of it. So the shape of those fans is a circle. So, And it has like a wire in it, so the circle don't be perfect all the time, but you want to want to use a circle shape. So I'm going to go in here and cover as much of this as I can with the circle. 
I'm going to select the both of those. Select both of them and then go down here to the bottom right and hit slice. Okay, once you got that slice, you can click on the circle and remove it. Move what you need out of the way and you click on this and remove it. All right, now we're ready to work. Go ahead and make my circle a little bit bigger here. I'm going to go ahead and move my... All right, I don't know what my thing just did. We got to catch up. I'm going to wait till it just back to the size. Okay. And I'm going to go to Arrange, and I'm going to send to the back. And therefore, all of the rest of it will be able to go on top of it. I'm going to move my Maltese Cross badge over. Kind of center that in. I'm going to move my ribbon. Make this a little bit bigger. I'm just playing with everything, getting it sized up the way I want it to be. This, I want to be in the front of this. So I'm going to select it, arrange, send to the front. All right, on this name, I want to change this color. No, I don't. I'm going to keep it the same color. I'm sorry. Go make it smaller. Drop that down because I think I'm going to put a title over the top of there. That right there. So I'm going to go ahead and text. And she's about to retire. She's retiring as a chief. I'm going to put Chief right there. I'm going to go here and change the font. I'm going to use Georgia. Change it to Georgia font. Go ahead and change this to print. Alright, I gotta make that tiny tiny to fit over the top of her name. Let's see what I got. Move this up a little bit. Let it barely touch all that. Alright, now I'm gonna go and select all of this. And I want all of this to be centered, so I'm going to center horizontally. And once I get all that done, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. Okay, now I'm going to put something right here. I'm going mm, to... I'm going to put... Happy retirement. Um, she did 37 years and nine months of, of dedicated service. Well, I can't type. Oh, crap.
Okay, and I want to, I want that to be centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and center that. Go ahead and change it to print. Make it tiny. And move it here. Oh crap, come on now. All right, computer, catch up. Move this over here, and I'm gonna change this to white. Okay, and blow it up to fit right in here. Now this computer has a mind of its own sometime. All right, now I'm gonna select all align center horizontally. And once I get all of that done, I'm going to flatten it. Okay, if you notice that the shape of the um, pouch is not as circled, so sometimes when you put it on here, it may cut it off. So um, if you want, you can duplicate this. Go ahead and hide one of them. And then you can go here and unflatten. I want that back to be unflattened. So I'm unflattening all of these. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hide the um, background. And then I'm going to select all. You can click it and select all. Or you can go right up here and hit select all. And I'm going to flatten it. And then once that's flattened, I'm going to go back and open my background back. I'm going to click on this inside the background. And I'm going to make this small. I'm going to center that here. Therefore, with this the big background and then it's smaller, it should be able to uh, fit all on that pouch. It shouldn't cut it off so bad. So then I'm just going to go back, select all, align, center horizontally, and flatten it. Okay, the size that I need this to print, Cricut does not print and cut that large. So, I have to remove it from Cricut and put it into um, Silhouette. Into my Silhouette so I can um, be able to print it with my sublimation printer. So, I'm going to go here. You make sure you click here in this little square right beside the zero to take the grid lines away. And then if you have, a, uh, if you clicked on the image where you have uh, the box around it, click outside in the white area somewhere that that box goes away. And then right down here where it says 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put that up there. Then right down here where it says type here to search. You're going to type in snippet. I just type in SNIP and it starts to do it. You're going to go there and select your snippet tool. Snipping tool. And when it comes up, you're going to go here and select new. And then it's going to get dull looking. And you're going to come down. And you're going to make a box around what you're trying to snip. So once you do that, you're going to go up here to file. Save as. And then you name it. I'm going to name this. Tyas. And this is the pouch. Fan pouch. I'm going to put two because I saved it before. So I don't know which one is which. So this is um, Dias Fan Pouch. And you save it. And click that out. You can X that one out. And you're going to go here and open up the the fan. Because it's, it's larger. The writing on it is larger. Make sure it's small enough that you can uh, get the square all the way around it. Okay, I'm going to click over here in the void area to take the square from around it. Go down here to this left box that says type here to search SNIP. Snipping tool comes up here. Click on it. Click here on new. Put your box around. Go to file. Save as. Die as fan too. All right, save it. I have that done. I'm going to save this. My that's saving, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And I'm going to go here to my silhouette and open it up. Okay, I'm gonna pause this until I, my um software come up for the silhouette. Okay, it's up now. So what you do when you get here into the silhouette studio? Oh, I need to get up. I'm gonna try not to move this. Take off the screen. I'm sorry. Okay, you're going to go over here to File, Open, Dias Fan Pouch 2 was the name of it. Open it up. I always move it off of here so I can see um, the background that I have. Try to make it um, big enough for me so I can see. Um, go over here to the right side. I am not familiar with Silhouette a lot. I just print out of here. I don't know how to design in here. I haven't um, found videos, I guess. I had time to do it. But I did figure this out by trial and error so if y'all know something that's quicker or, or better that i'm not maybe not doing right just let me know because i just figured this out on my own by trial and error but i go here to um open the trace panel and then go here to select trace area and then it's going to give you the little plus sign and you just Go around what you're trying to remove that outside from. I go here to threshold. And I move it over to about between 90, 96 and 90 uh, 
98 somewhere in there 95 to 94 to 98 and you will notice that everything that's not white will turn yellow so go down here to trace and detach and once you do that you're gonna click on this part here and you can click to it has a box around it and you can cut that with the scissors that's up here you cut you go to your image you got here and this is for the pouch I found that the one without the black trim to make it um four inches a 4.1 I found that works good for me and it covers the um the full area of the power so 4.1 and I move it here I'm gonna go over here to this paper and make it the size that I'll be using I'll be using um, 11 by 17 paper so I'm gonna go ahead and change this so I know what my placement need to be so 11 by 17 and it's gonna change it here so now I'm going to go back up here to file. And because I want it on the same page, I'm not going to go to open. I'm going to go to merge because I want them to be on the same page together. I'm going to go here to Dias Fan 2. I move it off of the white so I can see. Make it a little bit bigger. Go back over here. To the uh the trace panel go to select trace area trace what i want done go to threshold and move it down 94 to 98 once i got that there hit trace and detach Come over here, click on the white part, cut it, and I'm going to move this over here to my paper. And on the, the blank one, 10, the circumference of 10 is what I found to cover the full um, fan. This is really what I need to know. Is there any way on here that I can... Put the size in exact, or you. This is the only way by pulling pulling this. I, I have not figured that out. If there's something I can click to make this be the exact size I need it to be, because sometimes this don't stop where you want it to. It go a little bit over, but like that's fine with me because I haven't figured it out. But this been working for me, so I put both of them on one sheet. So I have both of them placed on the sheet of... Make sure it's inside the white. The red line is the cut line. The white is the size paper that you use. So make sure that it's all within the white. Then I go to send. Then I'm going to go here to print. I'm going to go to preferences to make sure that I have this set for 11 by 17 paper. I'm going to go to my preset 11 by 17. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to print. Okay, if y'all have questions on for setting up your printer or anything like that, I'm going to try to turn this camera. I have this Epson. This is the printer that I'm using. The Epson. Workforce 7710. Uh, I have another video telling you the printer I use, the ink and all of that. If y'all just refer to that video, and it's going to give you a video of a guy that does an awesome job on setting the printer up so that your colors will come out real vibrant and look like what you have on your screen. So if you would look at my video and just follow the steps from there.
My printer was uh, purchased at Office Depot. I am using sublimation paper for this because I haven't found... No, I'm sorry. Um, this is 11 by 17 paper. I'm using um, some paper. Let me get it. Oh. I can hold this up. I'm using regular printer paper that I purchased from Office Depot. 11 by 17. It comes with 500 sheets. I think it's like 20 some dollars if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe wrong, but it came from Office Depot, 11 by 17 paper. Regular printer paper is what I'm using. I am not using sublimation paper when I do my fans. Normally, I have a little system because I normally um, I do the fans. I sell them uh, by tens. So when someone purchases them, they have to at least buy ten. And so I normally have a system of while they printing. I normally have all of them open and out of the out of the plastic, and I have them stacked with the pouch and the fan stacked and I have my plastic stacked in another area. Once this print, it's only going to be one print, but I'll show y'all what I do. Uh, see if I can move this while y'all be able to see everything. But when this one pops out, I normally have my heat tape waiting and I get the pouch and I put it on top of the circle that is for. Get me a piece of tape and put it on this side. I get me a piece of tape and put it on this side. I'm trying to make sure I stay in the camera, y'all. I'm sorry if y'all can't see. I can't really see myself. But that's how I take this down. And I get my fan and I pull this down and I lay this in the circle. I get a piece of tape. Oh Lord, I don't know if y'all can see this. If I move this back and I tape this down so this will stay down because if it's up here, it'll get sublimation ink on it too because that ink will go through. So, center this, make sure that you can see some color from each side because if you do it the size I told you to, you can kind of see some of the border. And then I put one piece at the top. So, this is how I take this down. And then I move over to my heat press. I'm going to pause this so I get over there. Okay. If y'all can see, I have this. I have some regular paper that I sit over here. So what I do first is put a piece of paper down on my heat press. Um, I got this heat press from Heat Press Nation. It's a 15 by 15 press. Um, the little thing, that the timer, little clicker thing that's on the back of the, it, it did break. So, um, I've had it for about a year now, but that did break on me. And I just put something up there to stop it, uh, stop the timer. This don't look exactly centered, so I'm going to make sure I got this centered right. Okay, and what I do is... I put the fan going down, the fan side down. So 
So put your one blank sheet of paper down. Put your fan side down to that paper. And I put that paper down because it'll bleed through. Make sure that you have, you can see the color and it's under your press. So make sure your, both of them is under the press. If you remember how I spaced it out on there, that's about how much you need unless you got a bigger, uh, a bigger printer. I'm sorry, a bigger press. If you have a smaller press, you may have to press these separately. And you can press this on a, um, one sheet of paper and then you can press this the small ones you can put several of them on um, another sheet after I got this down I get another piece of printer paper and put over the top because I found that if it's not sublimation paper it bleeds through and when I put my cover sheet on it will be on the cover sheet and then you press something after that the residue will come off on your shirt so if you press in the light color shirt so I found that this has worked for me to put another piece of paper on top of here. Then I put my cover sheet on. I have my heat press set to 390 degrees Fahrenheit and it's on 90 seconds. So I'm gonna close my press down. And I have it on real firm pressure. It's probably as tight as it'll go. So I'm gonna wait the 90 seconds for that to, um, to press. Yeah, if you get you a system as your paper's coming out of the printer, have your um, heat tape, go ahead and tape both of them down. And by the time your last one print, you tape those down and you're ready for your press. You don't have to stop and then do something else. You just keep moving. But for the purpose of the video, I'm only going to do one so that um, that you can see. But y'all can figure out whatever that works best for you and you do it that way. Sorry the video running so long, but I want to make sure I don't leave out any steps that you see from start to finish what I did. Just be sure that y'all your um uh, fan is on on the printer because if it hangs off it'll tear the fan I, i've done that before as well i have an automated pop-up but it pops up so hard i always kind of push down on it so it don't as you can see this is the top cover sheet you see how they faded onto there so if i didn't have this here it would get on to this and then when I press another shirt, if I press a white t-shirt with something totally different on it, you will see this somewhere in, on the shirt in the background. Regular printer paper, y'all. Regular printer paper. Sublimation paper don't bleed through like this. If I was using um, sublimation paper, I wouldn't have to put another sheet over there. But sublimation, this is cheaper than sublimation paper, so I don't mind using two. So once I'm done, I'm going to pull that. And pull this with my uh, tape. I did forget something. I needed to show y'all. Okay, and this is it. As you can remember, when it printed out, it was kind of faded look. But once you're done, it has a nice, vibrant color to it. This is the pouch. You see how I made it smaller, and it fit everything fit on the pouch. Now, see how the pouch bleed through. That's one of the steps I did forget. Well, I have these little things that I cut from some excess um, sublimation paper. And I slide, I cut it to the shape of one of these. And I slide this in here. So when my, when this is taped down on here, I just come here and slide this in the, between the two. And it will not come through on the other side. So you can use you something to put in between here. If you use regular paper, you probably need a couple of sheets, maybe. But this is the sublimation paper, and it's thicker. So I use I cut some of those up. And I just put that there. And this is the fan in the pouch. And once I'm done with that, I start my papers all here with them taped down. I'll go ahead and put the second one. This sheet here, I leave it down throughout the press because I make sure that each one is lined up exactly because you just 
make sure that this is stacked. So they're gonna lay the same. You, long as you print it on one print, they all gonna lay the same. But my sheet that I put over the top, I only press one to two using that same sheet because it'll eventually get so saturated in here that it'll bleed through onto your um, Teflon sheet. So this paper on the bottom, you can use that the duration of you pressing. I normally press 10 to 20, but this one, don't press no more than two using that same sheet. Once I'm done, I turn and I go ahead and I slide my fan in the bag. Back in the bag that it came in. I drop this in the front of the bag. And I put one of my business cards in the bag. And I tape that down. By the time that I'm done doing that, the press may be going off um, for my next fan. So that is the process of how I sublimate on the hand fans, church fan, whatever you want to call them. But this is it, y'all. If this video was helpful, thumbs up. Like and subscribe to my channel, please. Like and subscribe. Share my videos. Um, thank y'all for watching. Peace. Have a blessed day.